Dietary Factors and Mortality from Heart Disease, Stroke, and Type 2 Diabetes in the United States. Although some chiropractors approach nutrition more as a proxy for prescription drugs, meaning using specific supplementation recommendations, it's generally accepted that obtaining nutrients from diet is preferable for most individuals. This means that the same caveats arise when asking someone to change their lifestyle rather than ingest the change in a pill form. And although it may be debated that for some individuals with specific deficiencies that an individualized approach is needed, the U.S. population as a whole has been studied and associated dietary factors including both insufficient intake and overconsumption are the primary factors that affect mortality. A new study has been published that provides a statistical breakdown of those associated factors and therefore illustrates potential preventive recommendations based on disease and individual demographics. The study is entitled Association Between Dietary Factors and Mortality from Heart Disease, Stroke, and Type 2 Diabetes in the United States, published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2017. Data from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey was used in a comparative risk assessment modeling design to estimate the cardiometabolic mortality related to suboptimal intakes of 10 dietary factors. The 10 factors studied were fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, whole grains, unprocessed red meats, processed meats, sugar-sweetened beverages, polyunsaturated fats, seafood omega-3 fats, and sodium. U.S. adults in 2012 individually and jointly were assessed for diet-associated mortality by disease subtype, heart disease and its subtypes, stroke, both ischemic and hemorrhagic, and type 2 diabetes. They were studied also by population subgroups, age, sex, race, and education, and trends were measured in association between 2002 and 2012. In 2012, a total of 702,308 cardiometabolic deaths occurred in the U.S. 72% were due to heart disease, 18% of deaths were due to stroke, and 10% of deaths were due to type 2 diabetes. Specifically for heart disease subtypes, 52% of deaths were due to coronary heart disease, 5% due to hypertensive heart disease, and 14% due to other cardiovascular disease. When all 10 dietary factors are combined, there was an association to 318,656 cardiometabolic deaths. That's nearly one in two, 45.4% of all U.S. cardiometabolic deaths in 2012. Specifically among individual factors, we see a fairly even distribution, but with sodium at the top. High sodium accounted for 9.5% of all cardiometabolic deaths, low nuts and seeds, 8.5%, high processed meats, 8.2%, low seafood omega-3 fats, 7.8%, low vegetables, 7.6%, low fruits, 7.5%, and high sugar-sweetened beverages, 7.4%. The lowest estimated mortality burdens were associated with low polyunsaturated fats at 2% and high unprocessed red meats at 0.4%. For deaths due to coronary heart disease, the top factors were low nuts and seeds in 15%, low seafood omega-3 fats at 15%, high processed meats at 12%, high sugar sweetened beverages at 11%, and high sodium at 10%. The top factors for stroke were low vegetables at 22%, low fruits at 22%, indicating that low fruits and vegetables accounts for almost half of stroke-related cardiometabolic deaths and also high sodium at 11%. And for hypertensive heart disease, the most significant factor was high sodium at 21%. Factors for type 2 diabetes were unique in that low whole grains becomes a substantial factor compared to heart disease and stroke. The specifics are high processed meats at 18%, low whole grains at 17%, and 
and high sugar-sweetened beverages at 15%. The researchers studied other demographic relationships. For males, there was a larger diet-related proportional mortality compared to women, consistent with generally unhealthier dietary habits in men. For young versus old, suboptimal diet was associated with a larger proportional mortality at younger versus older ages, and higher associations for blacks and Hispanics versus whites, and among individuals with low and medium education versus high education. Specifically, deaths related to processed meats and sugar-sweetened beverages were higher among men compared to women. Sugar-sweetened beverages were the leading estimated factor associated with cardiometabolic mortality between ages 25 and 64 years of age, and sodium at age 65 and older. Race specifics included excess sugar-sweetened beverages among blacks and insufficient nuts and seeds among Hispanics, and by education, low nuts and seeds and fruits, and excess sugar-sweetened beverages among less educated adults. Given some factors have trended down over the decades studied, the researchers point to strategies with evidence for effectiveness. Effective was, quote, multi-component school and workplace programs focused on healthier eating economic incentives for more healthful foods or taxation of less healthful foods, incentivized or mandated product reformalization, and restrictions on advertising of unhealthy foods to children, unquote. Specific examples cited were the fairly recent U.S. Food and Drug Administration voluntary sodium reduction targets for the food industry, and in the 2016 elections, sugar-sweetened beverage taxes passed in four cities, and the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, which serves 44 million low-income individuals in the United States. Improvements were found by increasing the SNAP Food Insecurity Nutrition Incentive Program to provide wider incentives for purchasing fruits and vegetables as well as nuts and seeds, and adding restrictions or disincentives for unhealthier products such as sugar-sweetened beverages. So although it may be a more attractive alternative to supplement what is not in the diet, it appears from population-based data that improvements using diet may be accomplished. Foods are complex and likely package needed factors uniquely compared to artificial supplementation. And it's also important that unlike the use of supplementation, the incorporation of more healthy food choices has an augmented effect by decreasing the use of less desirable foods in general. This may be a more difficult path, but eventually healthier and more sustainable.